Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Yes, yes, yes. This is another vlog by King Known Cleary on YouTube. Um, I want to talk about some sports. I've been talking about music all the time, but it's time to talk about some sports. Uh, sports, I'm sorry. I'm a little tongue-tied because I'm tired as fuck. Um, anyway, let's talk about the NBA, man. That's what I really want to talk about because a lot of my contemporaries, they want me to, to kick that real shit like I know I can. So, LeBron James. I mean, he's the most gifted athlete in the game today. I'm not going to say he's the best because I think Tim Duncan proved he's the best player in the game right now. Sorry to y'all LeBron fans and stands. I know it's a hundred million of you fools out there, but Tim Duncan's the best player in the game, man. He proved it. I mean, I know Kawhi Leonard and Manu Ginobili and Patty Mills played a nice little role in that format or fashion, but Tim Duncan's healthy, active. I think he's about, he's pushing 40. He's be about 38 now. And he's healthy. He is, you know, effective still. Got five rings. Why not? And I think if Kobe is healthy, he'll be the second best player in the game. I think LeBron is still probably arguably second by default due to the fact that Kobe Bryant hasn't fully recovered from his injury yet. But a lot of people are going to say I'm a LeBron James hater, which I'm clearly not. But whenever your playoff record boasts, or whatever your finals playoff record boasts of 40%, that's kind of alarming. I can see 50%. But LeBron's been to the finals five times, and he's only won two games. I mean, two series. I mean, my fault. I think this year that they deserve to be swept because they were playing atrocious. LeBron played his ass off. The rest of that team went on an APB. You needed an Amber Alert to find those dudes. Like, you couldn't find Mario Chalmers, his sorry ass, his weak ass. They need to release him with the quickness. Norris Cole didn't do anything. They didn't play Tony Douglas. They didn't play Michael Beasley. Why didn't they play Michael Beasley? Did you see him in game five? He was balling out of control. He was balling like he was never going to get an NBA job ever again. You don't play Tony Douglas, who is a shooter. You don't play Greg Oden, who can counter a Tiago splitter, who could counter Tim Duncan for about five, six minutes, you know, a quarter. And the off season has begun as well. Um, and let's get back to the finals. I mean, Kawhi Leonard, he's a top ten player as of right now. I don't know where I, where I would put him, but he's definitely top ten if you look at what he did. And you know, I was watching Numbers Never Lie, and they said that Kawhi Leonard was more effective off of jump shots than Kevin Durant was, and that was a huge stat right there. Those are some huge numbers. Kevin Durant is dope. He's definitely a top 10 player. I'm not knocking him, but there are questions defensively. I don't think he's a good defender at all. I think he's an offensive juggernaut, but of course you're an offensive juggernaut when you jack up 40 shots a game. And his teammate, Russell Westbrook, also is a top 10 player. I think he jacks up too many shots to play the one. I think that they should move Russell Westbrook to the two and, 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 um, and I guess go after a point guard or sign a point guard, et cetera, et cetera, that just passes the ball who isn't really uh, going to want to score. And I think Russell Westbrook will be more effective at the two. But, I mean, keep him at the one if you want to. But I think Russell Westbrook will do more damage at the two and just have one point guard who could just pass. 
That's why I think they should trade for Ricky Rubio. I think that'd be a good fit for them because Ricky Rubio will find a Kevin Durant, a Russell Westbrook, a Serge Ibaka. And please, for the love of God, let go of Kendrick Perkins. This 2.2 points per game, 2.3 rebounds. How the fuck are you a starting center in the National Basketball Association and don't even average 10 rebounds a game and you start and you play over 30 minutes? He is the Mario Chalmers of centers. Kendrick Perkins has got to be the worst center in the league. I mean, he's strong and he can get you five fouls. He, he would be helpful to a bench. Like, he can come off the bench. I like Kendrick Perkins off the bench because he's not starting. He's not a liability. And he's six fouls. I'd put Kendrick Perkins in just a hack if I was a coach in this in this league. I'm not saying that there's no place in the league for Kendrick Perkins, but I don't think he should start. I think he should be an off-the-bench, Suge Knight, Reggie Evans type of nigga. That's how I feel about Kendrick Perk. I think they should amnesty clause this fuck so they could bring in somebody who's better. I mean, that's why they're going after Pau Gasol. But I'm going to give you my predictions for this offseason. Carmelo Anthony, I'm not sure of a prediction for him because he doesn't even know. Because he could fit in so many places. But if I had to make a solid prediction, I'd say that Mm, I mean, his best shot is clearly on, on the Chicago Bulls with Derrick Rose. And Carmelo clearly said that he's not looking to, for them. He doesn't want the money. He wants to win. I mean, but then again, you know, the Knicks got Phil Jackson. You know what I'm saying? They got Derrick Fisher as the head coach. They got some decent pieces. I mean, Jose Calderon ain't no weak nigga. Dude could ball out. He could shoot the ball with ease. They traded Tyson Chandler, who was in decline as an NBA player, back to Dallas where he won his first and only championship with Dirk Nowitzki and company. But Samuel D'Alembert, he's no scrub. I mean, he could play D. He could play defense. Uh, I mean, uh, where, I don't know where they're going to utilize Melo. I mean, Stoudemire, is he healthy? Is Amon Shepard going to get traded for some more pieces? Um, Is Wayne Ellington going to get some PT? Because that dude got a jumper. Um, Who else they get in that deal? They got two other dudes in that deal. I forgot who they got, though. Oh, well. I got my predictions for Miami, though. They got Danny Granger and Josh McRoberts. Danny Granger's a good pickup. But is Danny Granger going to be healthy? That's going to be the question. I mean, Josh McRoberts, we know what he can do. He's a a pretty good ball handler for a four, a power forward. He can shoot the blood out the ball, and he dunks on yo ass. He shitted on Chris Bosh plenty of time. Speaking of Chris Bosh, Chris Bosh, you better take that money that Houston's dangling at you because Miami's not going to pay you that money, bottom line. I'm not telling him to leave Miami. I'm telling him to go to Houston. <laughs> I really think that Chris Bosh should really go to the Houston Rockets because they they need a four that can. I don't. I'm not saying that Chris Bosh can't check Lamarcus Aldridge. I'm saying they need an effective four. I think Terrence Jones was effective early on in the season, but when it came playoff time, he disappeared and became and he reverted back to that rookie mindset even though he was a second year player but Marcus Aldridge cooked Terrence Jones and Houston was just vulnerable and easy to beat I think that they had a fucked up matchup in Portland if they would have got somebody like Dallas they would have got somebody like Memphis I think they were able they were going to be able to beat those people I'm not going to say Houston's, you know, capable of beating San Antonio. That's blasphemy. But Houston could have hung with Blake Griffin and them. 
I think. But I don't think they would have won that series. But I'm saying this. Um, as far as the Rockets, they should get Chris Bosh. I mean, Chandler Parsons is currently a restricted free agent. I'm I'm thinking that he's gonna come back, obviously. So you got Patrick Beverly, James Harden. You got Patrick Beverly who is a martial arts defender because he gets into niggas' heads and he can shoot the ball. You got James Harden, who is a defensive liability, who really, really needs to consider having a defensive guard coach him on how to play defense because his defense has been a wall since he left the Thunder. I mean, I think he was decent defensively on the Thunder. But when he got to Houston and it was all about him and he had to be the guy, he couldn't guard the team's worst player. I don't think James Harden could guard Raymond Felton. I said it. But James Harden could shoot the blood out the ball. He's an effective ball handler, and he's a great playmaker. Chandler Parsons, he could ball out. And then Chris Bosh, you know, He's the best female basketball player in the league, hands down. Like, um, I think that Chris Bosh can ball. Like, he's a, you know, when he's healthy, when he's playing like Toronto Raptors Chris Bosh, he's a top 10 player. Easy work. I mean, he averaged, he, his career average is like 19 a game, uh, eight rebounds. He just needs to work on that, that uh, defense. And I think Dwight Howard, he's barely a top 15 player, maybe a top 20, because I think he's overrated in my opinion. A lot, But he's not the same Dwight Howard from the Orlando Magic. He's just healing from that torn labrum. He's just healing from that back injury. He's just getting his athleticism and his hops back. So I think this year he'll be much improved. He'll finally get back to 20 and, and 12 a game. I think so. I think Dwight Howard is the best center in the league by default because I think Joakim Noah played better than him last year, but you know, Dwight's numbers are a little bit better than his, but I think Joakim Noah he can pass the ball very effectively. He's I think he's more effective than Dwight. So, I say Dwight then Noah then the rest is yet to be seen. The Pacers and Lance Stevenson Lance Stevenson, Lance Stevenson, just turned down a five-year, $44 million contract by the Indiana Pacers. What do I think about that? I think it's smart for him to turn down that deal. He can go somewhere else. and If he wants to get paid, if he really wants to get that cheddar, he'll go somewhere else. Because the Pacers aren't going to pay him that much, especially for all the shit that he was pulling during the playoffs. I mean, but he was the only one, really, that was showing up for the Pacers, though. Paul George showed in flashes but Paul George isn't mentally dominant yet to where he could be like a Kobe Bryant or a LeBron James or Dwayne Wade even to where I'm like this is my ball I'm gonna take take over this game he doesn't do that in every game he only does it sporadically when they really really need him to George Hill I think he needs to shoot the ball more and and want to score more because I think George Hill is an underrated player. I think he's dope. I think he's a dope player. I don't think they should get rid of him unless they are getting a Rajon Rondo in return or that kind of a player. But Lance Stevenson is not really going to get no deal unless it's for a team that desperately needs him like Phoenix or Detroit. Or somebody that really, really, really needs a two guard, or Atlanta, or you know teams like that. I think Lance Stevenson, you know, I think he might go. I think he might consider going somewhere else. But I don't know what team he'll go to. I think Melo might return to the Knicks. It's a possibility because I don't think he would go to L.A. I mean, it would be nice if he went. I'd love it. I'm a Lakers fan. I'm a Lakers and a Pistons fan. 
I'm not a fan of nobody else but them two teams. And they both suck ass. And they need, they're desperately in need. But I think since Melo has a house out there, I think he could, he should, he, he should go to LA. Because if he goes to LA, Gasol is automatically coming back. But this dude is fielding offers from San Antonio, Dallas, um, Phoenix, uh, New York. Like I said, that's that's a lot of options for Paul Gasol. It makes it this off season is a lot hard harder to predict. The only thing that I predict is two of the big three, two only two of the big three, out of LeBron James and Chris Bosh, is coming back. Only two out of the three. I think Chris Bosh is going to leave because Chris Bosh ain't going to get paid no. Twenty-four million a year, or twenty-two, or whatever the hell he's poised to make, he's getting paid max dollars to play in Houston, who's already a playoff team, who has a better team than the Miami Heat right now. But Chris Bosh has a better chance to win in the East, so I wouldn't rule him out returning to Miami. I think the Heat getting Danny Granger and Josh McRoberts is, is step number one. Step number two is getting a guard. They got Shabazz Napier, who is definitely better than Mario Chalmers and Norris Cole. But they missed out on Kyle Lowry. I thought, I thought for sure that he was going to go to Miami. But Kyle Lowry decided to go back to where he, he started his rampage in Toronto, which is a smart move. I mean, I'm not, I don't have a problem with him going back to Toronto, but I'm saying he would have been better off going to Miami because that definitely would have brought the big three back in a heartbeat. But they didn't get him, so I, I think Dwayne Wade, I mean, who is going to pay him? Phoenix? You going? Is Dwayne Wade going to go from second in the Eastern Conference to possibly eighth or ninth in the West? I don't think so. Miami? Is a team that drafted him. I don't think he's going nowhere. Like, I don't think there's necessarily a need to go get Dwayne to for Dwayne Wade to leave Miami. I don't think. I think there's a 0.1 chance he leaves. He's staying in Miami because he's not going to start. I mean, a lot of people are talking about Dwayne Wade's at the end of his rope. I don't think so. I think Dwayne Wade's got two years left in him for elite basketball at least for that matter but I think Dwayne Wade just gotta um, train hard and I think he'll play you know I think they just gotta do what Greg Popovich does in San Antonio and just monitors his minutes monitor him but if the Thunder get Pau Gasol they're definitely winning the West next year I'm not going to say that they will stomp the San Antonio Spurs. That's a seven-game series. That's going to be a seven-game series. And I think the Thunder will win against them if the Thunder had Pau Gasol. Because Gasol is one of those people that give Tim Duncan nightmares. Because there are, they, are, they have the same type of skills. It's just that Tim Duncan is a lot more precise and more effective than him. But Gasol is pretty much the only person to give him problems. So, um, there will be a part two to this video. And comment, subscribe. Tell me what you think about what's going to happen with the NBA this coming year. All right? 100.